I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And hopefully, this just doesn't fuck up again. Yeah, yeah, I was, all, I was, getting, I was pretty optimistic, like, oh, cool, we still gonna do the podcast, and all of a sudden the thing craps out, like, oh, maybe not. It was like, yeah, <laughs> we'll episode two into it of doing the, the Skype cast, yeah. it was just all, it, it was really weird, because about at about 21 minute mark, it just kept doing this thing where it would repeat this thing that you said, but it'd be like, beppo blue bep, beppo blue bep. Just, and it just did that the whole fucking way through, over, like, what we were talking. Oh, uh, damn. So, I, there's some good shit in there, too. There's also some shit, I'm like, ah, uh, that was, that was kind of lame on my part, but, eh, whatever. I think that's, like, every podcast. I, you know, I think every I podcast, think... You, you walk away saying, why the fuck did I say that? But then, like, I think we probably notice it more than other people, you know? <laughs> well, because I notice it on other people's podcasts, too, and I think it's all due to the fact that it's a uh, free-flowing, unscripted type of media, mm-hmm. so you just kind of say things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, anyway, something I, uh, we were talking about last time, but I just I don't think I, I think it probably cut off. I mean, I haven't even heard the last one because it's only like like thirty minutes long or twenty five minutes long. Yes, or it's something. not even that. Yeah, it's twenty five minutes if you include like the music. Oh. <laughs> if that even. <laughs> Did you? Does, does it just abruptly end, or because I haven't heard it yet? Does it abruptly end, or does it say, "Well, it looks like we lost the audio. Tune in next week." Um. The last line I use, because it doesn't like totally abruptly end, but it goes like, I think I say, if I don't have a drink, all hell is just un- unleashed or something like that. And that's where it <laughs> fucking ends at. <laughs> what if I, I wish you did, I just wish you just added in like some just gunshots, just bam, 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 and the episode just went up. You're like, what the fuck happened? Is there going to be an episode next week? Just add in some gunshots and this week I'm come in like, yeah, here we are. Okay. What happened there? I don't know. Anyway, moving on. So yeah, all, all I did is I just kind of cut it off there and then put a little like um, kind of announcement going. Yep, that's what fucking happens when you put your faith into technology and computers and recording devices and have all these things working at once. I kind of I noticed something. I mean, I, I call it caveman rage because uh, there's like this every so often. Because I just got my, my phone uh, crapped out of me a little bit ago, and I think I talked about this in the last podcast. I don't know if you got this part of the conversation, but my phone crapped out on me, and Apple has this thing called the iCloud, and I guess everybody has probably their own version of it by this point. But where you kind of save everything backed up onto your uh, on, I guess this cloud or whatever, and then you bring it back down when you get a new device. Well, mine was all they were all lost, and I was trying to get it back, and I. It's one of those things, you should be grateful that it's there, it's just, it takes a little while, but you can't help it when it's like fucking up when you first turn it on and asking you a million different questions, and you like, you answer the same question a couple times and put, re-put in your password a couple, like, like five times right in a row for different things, you just kind of get this thing I call caveman rage, where it's just kind of like there is no real, like, uh, you don't really have a good reason, you just get natural, it's just like, man, computers, no, man, you just get kind of like that, you know what I'm talking about? I know exactly where it's just like you just get frustrated. It's just like fuck this and fuck you, and you just you want to like, break something. But if you break something, that means you have to pay another three hundred dollars for a new phone. You know? Yeah, you don't want to break it though. It's like that's that's the only thing. But that's the thing. So you just get this. You just like storm off and just leave the phone charging for a while. It's I reached like, that point. As a, sorry, go ahead. Uh, as I say, you continue on, then I'll tell my story. It's like I reached this point where because what happened was I opened up my Podomatic and I was so frustrated because. It started downloading, like, not every podcast, not only every podcast I've had, not every podcast i li- listened to over the last couple of months, but over the last, like, year and a half. So all this extra stuff, plus five, like, Christian podcasts I've never downloaded. It just said, let's throw these on here. It's just, like, five random Christian podcasts. He'll like that. And, yeah, yeah. It is, look at this. It's Rooster Teeth. Two average dicks, smodcast. This guy's clearly a church going boy, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so anyway, um, especially if you got Christopher Titus on there too to back it all up. <laughs> I fell behind on Christopher Titus. He's one that I kind of go in and out of, and not that he's bad. It's just there's so many podcasts out there, and you got to it's you got to every so often there's one or two you got to kind of leave behind and then come back to later because there's just I listen to so many different podcasts. That's true. Uh, I use Christopher Titus as sort of like. 
you know, after Kevin Smith, he's the next one I listen to, and he's sort of like I call him like my news podcast. It's how I learn what goes on in the world without having to watch the news my myself. <laughs> I used to listen to BBC all the time and to, and Young Turks, and I still do listen to them every so often, but uh, every day I listen to them, it's kind of like, okay, who got raped, who got murdered, what blew up? And it just kind of like, it was the same thing, different, different shit, just different place, and what hate crime was going on where and what part of Florida. So I'm just like, I'm just taking a break from that for a little while. I'll come back to it. But anyway, so it's downloading, it's re-downloading all my podcasts, downloading them all at once. And I know how shitty this sounds. This is so fucking first world, like whiny bullshit but like, still, oh my, my podcast i'll download it once oh the bandwidth oh, oh but my, no but my it's, data it's like, <laughs> but it's one of those things it's just slowly kind of like it's taken forever to get to anything right mm-hmm. so i'm just getting frustrated so i i eventually just call i call uh apple trying to figure out what i can do to stop it and you know just uh because every time i delete something it starts to re-upload it again you know like how so I call Apple and it's like, you have reached an automated voice message machine. I can handle full sentences. It's like, oh, God damn it. You know, so I keep on asking it, like, take me here, take me there. It's not taking me into the right spots. And then when it finally gets me to the right spot I want to go to, it says a $20 charge may apply. And I just say, fuck you. I just yell right at the robot. And the robot says, like, just give us one moment. Give us one minute, please. And quickly transfers me to, like, somebody. Like, it's just like, hello, Mr. Donaghan. Just like. Uh, yeah. I was just are like, you are hey, you a are person? We... Are you alive? <laughs> yeah, I'm just like she's like. Uh, are we having trouble here? I'm just like, oh shit. <laughs> well, I guess fuck you is the secret word to getting to a person. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, yeah. Uh, look, I'm I'm not mad at you guys. You guys are just doing your job. I got a little frustrated with the computer and said an expletive. Anyway, here's my situation, and she just gave me the short and simple. All right, you just gotta wait for it. I'm like, okay, thank you very much. Like, you have a good day now. Just very calm and very kind of like you hurt our robot's feelings, you know. <laughs> like the next that day, robot is gonna go cry for two hours now. Are you, are you happy with yourself? <laughs> Robo Steve Jobs, you know, <laughs> Robo Jobs. So I end up going. So then, like the next day, I'm having a similar problem. Something's not not that exactly, but something similar. So I give them a call again. She's like, "Hello, please, uh, you know, same robot." And I say, uh, "Same robot. It's hired at other jobs." <laughs> yeah, and then, then then I say, like, just as like, please say your please say your cell phone number. I'm like, "All right, say my cell phone number." It's just, it's, please say your name, Ryan Dunn. Oh, one moment, please. <laughs> the robot was just like. I can't fucking talk to this guy. Surely whoa, whoa, you whoa. talk to him. This guy told me to. Told me, this guy yelled "fuck you" to me the other day. I can't handle that. I'm just doing my fucking job. You take it. You know. <laughs> I pissed off the robot. So the much of the robot. It's like you're on the blacklist now. From that I'm, robot. I'm on the robot. I'm on the iBots blacklist. I've always learned that when um whenever I'm on like uh, calling any company or whatever, and I have to go through that robot, if I just sit there and go. Let me speak to a person. Let me speak to a person. Let me speak to a person. It'll finally just transfer me over. Even the robot's like, I can't fucking deal They're with just this like, guy. I can't deal with this guy. He's, he, you call me a robot, and this guy's just repeating the same thing over and over again. <laughs> fuck, let a person talk to this guy. Shit, fuck. Send him to the intern. Don't even send him to a real fucking person. Just send him to an intern. <laughs> But mostly it's like, you know, I will say, cause people always like go like, oh, I had such horrible service with this company or that company. Mostly once I kind of get past that first, like, couple minutes of just dealing with the robot and they finally get me to a person, that person always does, like, magic. They always yeah. fix any problem I've ever had. They correct it, like, in seconds, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. And they, I've never had a problem from that point on, you know? I, I think it's that thing. It's just you get a new phone, you get something like that, and then you're trying to upload all the stuff. You know where you know how it works before, but this one, since it's a new phone or new uh, new uh, iOS or whatever, it's a little different. So it's just like, where the fuck is it? And then you realize, oh, it's over here. Okay. But going back to that primal rage, you know what else gives you that really, like, caveman primal rage syndrome? What's that? It's when you play pretty much, like, older games, as in, like, maybe Super Nintendo back. Like, not Mm -hmm. even Super Nintendo. Like, you know, regular Nintendo and things like that. Because I was playing the original Metal Gear game for MSX, and I was playing both of them. I beat Metal Gear 2, because I was like, you know, I've played these games, but I've never beat them. I kind of got to a point where I was like, I don't know what to do now. And when I first got those games, it was pretty much pre where you'd go on the internet and look it up. It was just kind of like, oh, you don't know? Well, uh, do they sell a strategy guide for it? No? Well, then you're fucked. (laughs) You're like, oh, you want to call the hotline where they charge you 99 cents a minute? You're like, no, not really. (laughs) So, like, I I just got to this point where there is, there's this truck in Metal Gear 1 that if you step in it, because you always step in these trucks because they always got items in it. So I was like, oh, okay, this truck, if you step into this one, 
It's a little warp point to take you back to the beginning of the game. Oh, oh I, when I can when you I step stepped back in it, in it, can you step back in it? No, you can't step back in it. And it was one of those ones where I had to go run all the way through the complex, go up the fucking elevators, cross the roof, parachute off the roof, like run through a little courtyard, like you know. And it probably wasn't that long. It probably didn't take any longer than five minutes. But I accidentally ran that truck twice because when I came back to it, I forgot which one it was, and I just wanted to see if there was an item in there. And I, and I was standing up, and I was yelling at the TV, and it was, like, late at night. I was like, fuck you, truck. You fucking truck. You stupid fucking truck. Like, just, like, the most primal thing ever. I just, I'm yelling at an inanimate object that's on a video game screen. It's not even like I'm yelling at, like, a boss or something like that. It's the truck. I think we've all had And that then later on in the game, there was another one of those fucking trucks. It's like, at least make the truck a different color or label it or something. You just step in there. It's like, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, this truck's going for delivery. I wonder if, like, Hideo Kojima's like, watch, this is going to piss off so many people, but they're going to fucking come back to it because they already spent their whole allow- the year's allowance buying this fucking game unless they got for Christmas from their parents. Yeah, it's just one of those ones, like, and as I said, it's, it's not like it's like you were totally fucked. Like, it was just like, oh, restart the game. It was just one of those ones where it's just like, are you fucking serious? I got to run all through there again? And we may mention this before, but, like, that right there, like, nowadays, something like that could probably turn you off from a game. Like, fuck it, I'm done. But back when you were a kid, you would play through that shit, because that's one of maybe two games you got that whole year. And even if you didn't like a game, you forced yourself to like it and play through it, because you were stuck with it for two, for at least a year. Oh, I remember that game, year. kind of getting stuck with games that probably weren't actually that great. And you'd but you played them so smile. much that you actually you, you got into it, I guess you could say. When you as you played the game, you'd have to actually force yourself, kind of like this rictus Joker like grin, like to force yourself into liking the game. Like no, no, it's it's great. Sonic um, so, so, uh, Sonic Adventure Two is one hundred percent awesome. It, it's so awesome. I'm so even glad the, I can even the play as Dr. Robotnik and Knuckles. It takes fucking an hour and a half to find four little pieces of the emerald. Isn't yeah, that that's so uh, yay you know? Because that's that was, my, that, it's my it's my biggest turnoff. I'm so glad I still have a complete file on Sonic Adventure Two, so I can go back in my Dreamcast and at least play all the Sonic and Shadow levels without having to play Tails and fucking Knuckles and all that stuff. Well, I'll say that. Well, even like uh, the Tails and Robotnik, it's not even like those levels are bad. I mean, they're, they're, they're just they're, like they're, they're, they're just they're, like they're brain, brain dead. dead. Yeah. You just run through, push B, push B, jump occasionally, you're good. But um, those right there, it's just they're so easy, and it just kind of like it just doesn't feel like a Sonic game. It, just, it feels like something else. Um, they just took the, the play mechanics for the E101 Gamma or whatever and just threw it into that. But um, the thing that just took forever, at first it wasn't so bad, but then it got huger and huger and huger was the Knuckles and Rouge ones, and those just took forever. It was just like, fuck, you know? And uh, that was one of those, that was at that time. That was like before I had a job, and I was like still in middle school. So that was at that time where just like you would save a whole year for a video game, and you would like that game, and you would play through that fucking game. And you would almost lie to yourself on how good it actually was. Now the Sonic and Shadow stuff, we've mentioned this a thousand times before. That's all great, but everything else, it's like, Either mediocre or to shit, really. Yeah. Well, it's one of those ones, too. Like, nowadays, it's almost the point where, like, you're like, I'm an adult. I can make decisions, and I can buy whatever I want. Yeah. So if you don't like something, be like, fuck that. That's it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And uh, you also with, uh, well, Gamefly was out by then, but I didn't have Gamefly, so fuck it. Well, yeah, well, hell, was Gamefly out by? Actually, maybe been it was out, out by Dreamcast. Because I, I, I remember getting Gamefly when it was pretty much, like, in at least its first year, mm-hmm. if not even under that. And that I remember like Star because I got Star Fox Assault. Oh, and that was like right yeah. when that came out. Okay, maybe it wasn't out by then, but whatever. I guess if you got the GameCube version, maybe. Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugh, but yeah, last time, um, last time I actually wanted I want to mention this. Uh, I'm not sure if we if, it, if the last podcast got that far into it, but uh, if not, just brief rehashing. Uh, I guess by this point, uh, almost like about a week and a half ago, I went out drinking with some Irish coworkers. Because right now, um, my my job, we have a bunch of Irish people on a work visa. And the Irish, they're, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm half Irish myself, but you, you realize, you're like, oh, I'm half Irish. And then you kind of meet someone who's, like, full-blown Irish. It's just like, oh, I ain't anywhere near Irish, as Irish as these folks right here. You know? Yeah, that American Irish is not nearly the same. Yeah, it's like the off-brand, you know. It's like, it's, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not like Coke or Pepsi, I'm Shasta, you know. Yeah. So, so, um, or you're like uh, dad's root beer or something like that. 
dad also dad, they also have dad's cream soda as well. Did you know that? Do they? Dad's dad's orange that. cream soda. I'm curious. Whenever that I think of dad's wrong, root beer, get dad's yeah, orange dad's cream soda. soda. You, you want dad's cream soda now, don't you? <laughs> Whenever I think of dad's root beer, though, I just think of like my grandparents. House. I do. And I think have... I think everybody's grandparents have that too. Because I remember going to RC Cola. Pretty much anybody's house in like the 90s. Yeah, or you had RC Cola. They never had Coke or Pepsi. It was always dad's root beer and RC Cola and Paps. And Paps and uh, Miller High Life. I remember a lot and of Miller like, High Life. And then, like, I remember grandmas always having, like, those wine boxes, too. Oh, yeah. Grandmas love their fucking wine boxes. Yeah. I know. They'd always get in the wine box. And maybe that was just a cheaper way to get it. I'm mm-hmm. not too sure. But then, anyway, um, and they'd always have something, like, something kind of like the Big Mouth Willie Bass or something like that. Maybe not in the ni- maybe not, like, right in the 90s because that didn't come out to the late 90s, but something to that level. You know what I mean? Well, they always had gimmicky things. Like, my grandpa, he had this really sweet clock. There was this giant kind of like mousetrap looking contraption where like these little metal balls would all roll through these paths and everything. Uh-huh. And as they went through, it changed the time of the clock. But it was just the coolest fucking thing to watch because you're like, oh, my God. Just this huge thing. And then like it goes through its traps and it makes its like motions and whatnot. And goes through leap. It reminds me like, remember that game for PC called like the Incredible Machine or something like that? Something. Yeah, yeah. It was like you had was to it design. Was Arts? And you had, you had to make like I think so. There's one that's there's like, like those ones where like you had to solve these puzzles and like they would give you like not only would you use like you know like a ball would roll from the top and it would kind of go through like the dun 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 do 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 Pee Wee Herman style or something like that. Yeah. But then it'd have weird things like you know oh the ball lands on the cat and the cat runs across and it hits the bird and then you know it shoots the missile off. There's one kind of like that. It wasn't really a Star Wars game per se, but you had to make. Star Wars action figures. It's totally. It really actually does sound kind of like recruitment for like people to work for like George Lucas. You know, like, hey, go go to this factory and make these Star Wars figures. It was just like this whole. When, when you get the high score, it just sends you like an application to go over to like Vietnam and like make some <laughs> Kenner action figures. <laughs> you think it's like the last star pilot, but it's actually the last star fighter, but it's actually just to go into a factory, to a sweatshop factory, and just lead a bunch of like nine year children to make like 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 a uh, fucking uh but like bar a cantina bar thug or whatever <laughs> number two yeah all the ones that you always wonder like who buys these except for people that are trying to buy everything well i bought a fuck ton of them because i just needed i, I would have a big elaborate stories and I, there's almost this kind of rule of like what's the point of playing it just for the story it would always be kind of like this takes place between episodes you know like four and five this is a, and i always need you always need background guys and that would take like 30 minutes to set up like okay that was five minutes it's time to set up the next one you know <laughs> Yeah, I guess out of my plots here and stories. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. So, Irish people. So, anyway. Irish people, bar, drinking. So, yeah, uh, there's a employee meeting, and there's a group of Irish. There are a lot of them are staying in Berkeley. So, I'm like, who's coming with us to Berkeley? And, like, my, uh, I was hanging out with my supervisor. He was going, like, okay, I guess I'll go, too. So, we end up going to Berkeley. And um, it's one of those things, I'll say this, I feel like a total puss, but mentioning this, but, like... I, I, they're they're like friendly, but when it comes to drinking, they are aggressively friendly. Like Ryan, drink this right here. Just like I don't know, don't be a puss, drink it. And they got like a smile on their face. You know? and like everybody's just sitting around watching. Like come on, buddy, you drink it right now. Come on, mate, don't be a puss now. I don't know, it's, that's more of a Cockney accent, but yeah, you know what I mean. So hey, Ryan, you, you gotta drink up now. Exactly. Well, <laughs> it all sounds the same when they're yelling it over loud music. <laughs> yeah. At some point, like before we got to this one bar, they we they all put on um, Gaelic. They, there's a sport called Gaelic football, and we've actually both looked it up since then. And what it is is it's basically kind of like proto football with a little bit of like a proto American football with a little bit of yeah. soccer. And a little bit of even basketball. It's like you can go four steps, you can kick it and dribble it to yourself, you throw it, you got people tackling you and trying to swipe the ball from you. I watched some footage of it. That sport looks fucking brutal. I don't know why that's not here. That looks way more. Well, it's even got like. It looks way more fun. It's got those cool. elements of rugby, and it just looks like people are fucking manhandling each other, and like. And then they even got the whole, I guess, proto like a uh, field goal thing. I don't know what you would yeah. call that in Gaelic football, but like, yeah. And it- and they, yeah, as, as I said, you know, they're dribbling it, they're kicking it, they're throwing it, they're tackling each other. I was actually kind of confused at the same time what was going on because there was almost like too much going on. Well, it was actually to me, it was more interesting than just like American football right there. I mean, I don't know, maybe this, maybe the yeah. commercials is what kills American football for me. But 
this right here, I was like, oh, fuck, that is, this is actually really fucking tough. This is really fucking badass right here. But anyway, so I was watching it, but as I, and I was watching it, and I, all I could hear is, I could just hear the internal monologue, which I was like, fuck you, fuck you, cons-. you know, that's all I could really fucking hear, <laughs> just watching, because all these big, burly Irish dudes just slamming into each other, fucking fighting each other for this fucking, like, ball. But, all in their short shorts. Yeah, but it's one of those things, like, You'd say you'd make you give them like some crack about their short shorts, but they beat the fuck out of you right then and there for it, though. You know, so I wouldn't say I shit. You know, well, I think it's like I don't. I think that's almost like Irish or like Ireland's official sport because they created it. It came out in 1887, mm-hmm. so it's been around for over a hundred years. But I'm surprised I've never heard anything. But then again, I'm not that big of a sports person, so I guess it doesn't surprise me that much. Well, but. it's apparently mainly just big in Ireland, is what they're telling me. So, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's too many other places. Maybe they play it in England, too, mm-hmm. but I don't know. So, I was, um, we, we, it looks pretty official for just being played in, you know, one small country. Yeah, but they, so I was, so they were, they were, we were all putting on these jerseys, jerseys for different teams, and he's like, you wear this one, like, this one's my favorite team, you gotta wear this. It's called the County Miners. Now, people who didn't like the team, they're calling it the Cunty Miners. That's what they're calling it. Oh, it's a Cunty Miner, yeah, all right. So, at some point, now this guy could have been totally bullshitting with me, but at some point when we go to this bar, this one guy and his fiance stop me, and they're both just kind of bullshitting with me, and just we're just talking. I don't even remember what the fuck we're talking about, but at some point he mentions my jersey. He says like, "Are you a fan of those balls? You like them a lot?" And he's like, "Oh, I really don't know anything about them. My friends threw this jersey on." He's like, "Like." What do you know what the name is? It's like I, I, I can like I can't remember their real name, but they're calling it the Cunty Miners. The guy then starts bust up laughing, and the guy he actually says to me like, he says like I'm actually on that team. That's my team. I'm kind of with I'm kind of like taking a vacation with my fiance right here. So I'm really glad he was a friendly guy. I was like, what'd you call me, boy? Not fucking call. Yeah, you call I was, me a co- I was fuck almost. You. Yeah. Here, drink this now. <laughs> What you don't fucking ask? What you fucking fuck for? Who do you think you ask me? What you need to drink that I'm giving you? That you <laughs> yeah. You're the. I don't know. And, I'm- and once again, looks like the recording software thing on Skype fucked up again. Boy, I really don't like shitty technology, and I'm kind of make me angry when uh, this stuff happens. Nothing's worse than wanting to do a creative project. And then all of a sudden, technology fails you, and then it really just burns you out. But um, it's weird. It works. Of course it worked fine the first time. Puts all those hopes and dreams into you, and then next thing you know, it takes it away the next two. So I'm not too sure what to do. I guess it's time to go look for a new one to do those silly, silly Skype podcasts. Well, hope you enjoyed another short, short podcast, and... Um, Well, we'll try to figure this out again next time. Thanks for listening to the Old Man Orange Podcast. Check out our website at oldmanorange.com for even more podcasts, cartoons, videos, music, and more. Send us an email at oldmanorangepodcast at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review us on iTunes, Podomatic, or any of the other fine sites we might be located on. And if you want to help out even more, click on the Amazon or GameStop links on our webpage before you make any purchases there. It won't cost you a penny, but it sends us a little something our way. Thanks again, and tune in next week for more Old Man Orange Podcast.